And welcome to a live broadcast of WOTP Playhouse of the Air. Very good, very good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> having just returned from Los Angeles, having completed filming Dottie Goes Bananas, a Technicolor spectacle, as its leading lady, Mary Hatch, we bring you Miss Ohio 1943, Miss Sally Applewhite. And here comes that scare baby, my kid brother, Henry Bailey. I don't like coconuts. You don't like coconuts? Say, brainless, do you even know where coconuts come from? Why, look here, from Tahiti, Fiji Islands, the Coral Sea. What drew you to It's a Wonderful Life? Just that it's my my husband's favorite movie, my favorite Christmas movie. I've watched it forever. And actually, about a year ago, it was probably just prior to when the artistic board announced it, Phil and I were at, uh, it was some kind of fundraiser for the Old Town Playhouse over at Garden Grounds Cafe. And he was just telling me about the season. He was naming, you know, we, I knew, we knew Les Mis and all that. And he was explaining It's a Wonderful Life, and I just kind of went, that sounds like a project for me. Mm -hmm. Just kind of clicked with me that it, I like uh, things where actors are challenged and they're satisfied because, you know, there's nothing worse than having three lines and then you're off stage waiting for two hours and then a three mm -hmm. more lines where these mm -hmm. actors had plenty to do, all of them, whether you're playing George Bailey or you're playing, I mean, there is no small role here in this show because they're playing so many characters if they're not George or Mary. Mm -hmm. And I just knew, you know, it would be a, a fun project. Hey, uh, George, um, uh, what's the combination to the safe again? We wrote it down so you wouldn't forget it. So I suppose I should give it to miserable failures like you and that idiot brother of yours to spend for me? And he's not a failure. You can't say that about my father. George, George. You're not. You're the biggest man in town. Looks like you're ready to get out of here. Ho oh, oh, ho, hello, Violet. One of these days, you're going to see that bag covered in travel labels. Italy, Baghdad. Hey, why don't you come to the dance tonight? Oh, what, and be bored to death? Why? We could go up to Stewart Lake. I hear it's beautiful up there this time of the year. We could swim. And how about we, well, we could go climb Mount Bedford. We could smell the pines and, and watch the sunrise against the peaks, and we'll stay up there all night, and everybody will be talking, and it'll be a terrific scandal. Am I talking too much? Yes! <laughs> Why don't you kiss her instead of talking her to death? Who is that? In my book, I said that my father died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book. I'm talking about the bill you lost. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on, and it's What's the story on, on Matt Archibald? Um, I, he I heard that he, he went ahead and assembled uh, it, the compositions that he's playing yep. throughout yep. the play. He, just, he chose all the music. I just gave him the script and said, you know, there's in the script it's written transition music, different places, but I said I'd like theme music, character music, whatever you want, and he pretty much just ran with it. He, he did it all. and I, You know, I, it's become such a another character to the show. In mm -hmm. fact, he was pretty busy with Les Mis, so we didn't get a lot of him. And when he finally came and then he like had to miss one, the actors were like, oh, I, I it just that, didn't feel right. To I noticed happen. that he even went to the, um, uh, to the extent of cutting his hair in, uh, era, in, the, yeah. in the right period of the time. Well, that was, uh, I brought in Patty Brown to cut everyone's hair. Yeah. So uh, Sunday, Tech Sunday, she cut all the guys' hair. Oh, Whoopi! Whoopi, we're still in business! We're still in business! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I feel so good. I can spit in Potter's eye. Hey! So, uh, where are you going on this now honeymoon? Oh, we are gonna shoot the works, Ernie. A whole week in New York, and then a whole week in Bermuda. The highest hotels. The richest caviar, the oldest champagne, the hottest music, and of course, the prettiest wife. Your money, it's not, it's not 
here. Well, what do you mean it's not here? Well, no, 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 wait, no, wait, wait. Listen, listen, listen. Your money, it's in people's houses. Why? It's in the Kennedy house, and the McLaren house, and your house, and in a hundred others. Yeah, I got two thousand dollars here. This will tide us over until the bank reopens. Three, two, one, a six o'clock! We made it! Oh, 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 I didn't know if we were going to make it there. Oh, Uncle Billy, lock the door! We brought something for you and your family, Mr. Martini. George and I bring something for all the new owners. All the Martinis? Maria, come quick! Our first the house woman the gifts. Bring it the kids! Yay! Hard to believe uh, that this uh, it's a Wonderful Life uh, was made into a motion picture in 1946. Frank Capra was the director. And that when, when it first uh, uh, was showed to the uh, viewing audience, it, it really didn't go over very People well. People thought it was a downer. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was 1946, uh, a year after World War II came mm -hmm. to a, an end. And it wasn't, there was nothing. Uh, depressing yeah. about it. it was very invigorating very ins inspirational and that but now it's uh, listed as uh, one of the, uh, one of the 100 best movies American movies and it's probably in, in the history. top 10 Christmas movies I mean it's iconic right. yeah yeah like that I think there's like about five five in that uh, category mm -hmm. of being the most favorite uh, Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. I always enjoyed it. I mean, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a movie that uh, Jimmy Stewart uh, I didn't like. Right. You know, right. I mean, the cast was really, really great. Well, why would you want to marry a guy like me anyway? To keep from being an old man. I was going to see the world. I was going to build things. I was going to... I was going to give you the moon, and what have I given you? Not even a new dress. Not for months. You could have married anybody in town. You could have married Sam Wainwrighter or anybody else. I didn't want to marry anybody else in town. I want my baby to look like you. I didn't even give you a honeymoon. We were going to... Your what? My baby. Responsibilities that a director has. What challenges uh, in putting this uh, play on stage did you encounter? Well, I, I guess I was concerned that it, it, for one, it almost seemed too easy. I mean, you have your actors, and they're supposed to be a radio actors, so there's not really a lot of blocking, you know. And I, um, I, we came up with pretty much right in the beginning that they wouldn't stand, all five stand there the whole time because number one, you, that doesn't help focus on who's supposed to be the focus. And number two, it's a little tough if you're not in a scene for three pages to stand there. So we put the three chairs behind and the actors just naturally figured their, you know, when to come up and when to go back and it, it just sort of happened organically. Mm -hmm. So and then, you know, we knew we were having the sound effects on stage. One of the concerns was there was so much, 
you know, we didn't want them taking over the stage, mm -hmm. and there isn't a lot of room for the actors with them mm -hmm. on there. And then I knew I was going to have the piano on. I think my concern was, is this going to be too static? Mm -hmm. You know, but I guess there's just enough going on, and I again, I, I give credit to my actors. They're so mesmerizing because they are so good mm -hmm. that even though they're not doing all of the actions and really slapping each other, because instead John's doing a belt or smacking a baseball into a glove for the punches and things, it just still captures. I, I've, I didn't feel it until Thursday night with an audience in there, but I realized they're enthralling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But before that, I was like a little worried. Okay, yeah, this is so easy and it all goes together, but are people going to be going, this is boring. Eric, you wouldn't believe what's happened to me. Oh, you won't believe what's happened either. Come quick, George, they're on their way. Oh, who's on their way? The police, the FBI, the National Guard, oh, Perry, I don't care, I'm alive again. George, remember. No man is a failure who has friends. Thanks for the wings. Love, Clarence. What's that? It's a Christmas present from a very dear friend of mine. Look, Daddy. Teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Attaboy, Clarence. Appreciative. They, yeah. Are the are the actors uh, pleased uh, oh, yes. with, with yes, the outcome happy, of yeah. the of the show? Yeah, they'd like to see a little bit, a little bit bigger audiences. But you know, some of it is the word has to get out, and that's mm -hmm. a little tough when we only have one more weekend. But some of it is it's December, and there is so much going on in town. Oh, I mean, yeah. opening night we were trumped by Santa coming to town. Oh sure. You know, this is, this is the busiest Santa time Claus. of the year as far as uh, right. entertainment goes. Right. There are just so many choices. That How many more uh, performances do you have? So today at 3, Sunday, and then just Thursday through Sunday next So weekend. a total of how many? Seven. Seven productions. Wow. That's, uh, that's a lot of work mm -hmm. for seven performances, but uh, well worth it, though. Yes, it and, is. And uh, I, I was just very impressed with the, um, the four new actors that have come to the Old Town Playhouse, and uh, hopefully they're going to stick around and, and be in future productions. I hope so too. I yeah. think. Well, I think they're having a good time. Um, I think that they're, you know, enjoying it enough that they will come back. I know that both um, Chris and Alex, my George and Mary, are thinking about auditioning for Sound of Music. They both have beautiful singing voices, mm -hmm. and they could easily be. No, which which actors? The the two leads. I mean, Chris. Uh, Chris and Alex, the George and Mary, they both sing really well. George and Mary, mm -hmm. right? Oh boy, that that will be interesting mm -hmm. to see. It will. Well, uh, he's a, he could be a oh a great candidate for the uh, captain. Oh, that'd be really really great. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Jill, thank you very much for this uh, view into this production that's uh, currently playing here at the Old Town Playhouse, and I wish you well for the remainder of your run. Thank you so much.